Crank up the volume and get ready for real-world bird hunting by listening to the Wingman Podcast by Eastman's. Now your host, Todd Helms. This episode of the Wingman Podcast is brought to you by Savage. You know, a couple years ago, guys, when I got my hands on the first Savage Renegade that I'd ever seen, I was really curious about this new shotgun and this new kind of design that they had going on. And I tell you what, that curiosity turned into being blown away pretty quickly. I love how the Savage is tough as nails and just performs and kills birds across the board in any condition I need it to. I've had a couple thousand rounds through the models that I have now, and they just flat go bang and kill birds, which is what I need. I love the fact that I can change the fit and the feel, and the performance is next level. Gotta love the Savage Renegade. Hey guys, welcome to episode 94 or 95 of the Wingman Podcast. I can't remember exactly which one. And I've got Michael McNeil back on with me. He was a guest previously a couple months ago. We had a great time, had some shared some great laughs and some stories. And dude, you have been crushing it out there. I've been keeping up. You literally live the life that the rest of us all sitting at work dream about. I swear. It looks like you're at home for the moment. For the moment, yeah. What's the rundown on what you've been doing? Well, we started off August 15th here in North Dakota. Um, it was really warm this year. The molt migrators didn't push down exactly, so it got better as the season went on. They really started pushing in about the time that I went to Canada this year. We still had some great hunts. Um, we had a couple 70 bird days. Um, we had a lot of 40, 50 bird days early season in North Dakota. And then I, my, but then it kind of got cold. And as the molt started showing up here, the snow geese and the cranes really started pushing in. And I ended up spending uh, about three and a half weeks up in Canada this year. And Canada was in. It was insane this year, boys. It was awesome. And uh, so from Canada, we spent three and a half weeks up there. I ended up drawing, after we spoke, uh, a very highly coveted antelope tag on the Standing Rock Indian Reservation. And I drew a Standing Rock Indi Indi Indian Reservation um, mule deer tag, plus a North Dakota whitetail tag with a rifle. So from Canada, I came back, rushed back home so I could get in on the, on the opening week of um, antelope season, rushed down to South Dakota, killed a good goat, got back, went back up to Canada again, came back, uh, tried to get in, um, on my mule deer right away. Didn't see one big enough. So came back and then the snow geese started showing up here first, uh, couple weeks of November. Uh, we hunted really, really hard here for first two weeks of November in North Dakota and beat the heck out of the mallards and snow geese. From there, uh, I took 12 days and spent uh, down at in uh, North Dakota and South Dakota um, hunting mule deer. My nephew shot a really nice mule deer. I shot a really nice mule deer. Um, I shot a really heavy. In fact, looking at your picture from the one you shot, ours almost look yeah. identical. It's crazy. And uh, so from there, from the mule deer, I ended up uh, going out to Montana. Oh, oh, I actually skipped that. I ran over to Minnesota because my mama called and she said, Michael, you haven't been home since July. I think it's time to come home for a weekend. So I said, all right, well, what season's open in Minnesota? Well, muzzleloader season was open. So I ran back, I bought a, a muzzleloader tag in Minnesota, did my due diligence and tried to be a good son and spent time with my mama and uh, did some muzzleloader hunting with my uncle. Uh, saw a lot of small bucks, didn't end up shooting a buck in Minnesota, but I did end up shooting a doe. And then... Ran right back, packed everything up four days later, and we went out to Montana for um, uh, 12 days for waterfall hunting. Um, and I just got back from Montana on Sunday. I'm going to be here this week. And then I uh, head back home to see Mama again. And then on the 26th, we're driving out to New Jersey, and I'll be out in New Jersey until the 10th of January. So, and then after that, I still have a waterfall tag that I drew in South Dakota that I got to figure out. And then I was trying to come and see you late season. Yeah. So I'm trying to, I'm trying to fit everything in, but I have been, um, this is the most I've ever hunted in my entire life. It's been a freaking crazy ride. A lot of shit's died. 
Made a lot of good friends, friendship, relationships, met some new people, got to hunt some new country. Um, uh, highlight of the year so far um, was killing that mule deer. That yeah, uh, that was a stud muley, man. Yeah, and I, you know, and that was a, that was a really a because it's the first year in my life that I've ever saw for three days in a row and drooled over it. It was on private land. It was uh -huh. surrounded by Indian land, and it was sitting right in the middle of two does, and I got to watch it for three days and really look at how he drooled and drooled and drooled. And finally he made the jump, bred the dose, moved on. And I was able to uh, shoot him and uh, it was pretty cool. And then watching my nephew, he whacked, uh, he put a hell of a shot on that one that he shot in North Dakota. Uh, nice, nice uh, three by three. Uh, so that was kind of cool too, but it was a, it was an awesome, awesome fall so far. Ain't over yet boys. Ain't over yet. No. And we still got, Holy smokes. I don't know what I'm thinking. I'm still just, I still don't have birds, you know. It's like right. you were just up north of me a couple hours last week, and you're like crutching them, and we got nothing down here. Oh, but and I'll tell you and, what. And normally, normally I've got birds. I mean, there's some birds here and there, but they are so stale; they're scared of their own shadow. You know. Uh, yeah. So the honker. Also, I've heard I shot very few lessers in Montana in my entire life, but for whatever reason, because it was so warm. So typically when we go out west, there's a foot of snow on the ground. It's cold. The birds are in survival mode, which makes them very susceptible to decoying in close. And, um, but it was real warm. There was a ton of honkers. But on this particular trip, typically we get into the mallards in the fields too. And we didn't kill one duck. Not nope. one duck um, the entire trip we were there. Nope. All, all the ducks were feeding so apparently, as I'm told, I don't know the whole story. I've only been hearing it through farmers and a few uh, friends that let us hunt out there, that there was an outfitter that tried to start guiding, bought some Indian land. Um, there was a big coup about it. And apparently all the Indians on that particular reservation just said, nope, done. Nobody's hunting the Indian land this year. They shot off all hunting in that area. Not sure exactly what happened, but there was an outfitter that overstepped his bounds and tried to keep the Indians off the land because he was trying to guide on it. I don't know what it all happened. But, of course, since all the Indian land was shut down, where do you think all the mallards were? Yeah, exactly. There was about 30,000 mallards <laughs> over there that we didn't get to. I mean, it was just. There was I don't know where all my birds are. They're yeah, up there's, there. Yeah, there's 30,000 mallards. Um, I could drive you to them right now, and they're oh. there consistently every night, and they just fly out. and. Because for that reason, we had six ducks come in the entire time we were there, and I, they were kind of mixed in with the honkers, and you know how that works. They're working at the same time. I probably should have shot them just so I could say we shot a duck, but, I mean, but the lessers were there just thick. I mean, them boys in Texas have been doing pretty good, but I got to tell you, there's, I mean, we had a 45-bird lesser shoot, which was unexpected. Yeah. Um, that was awesome. I mean, that's, they decoyed good. Cool. It was just like down in Texas and Oklahoma. It was pretty cool. Hey, guys, this episode of the Wingman Podcast is brought to you by Juniper Mountain Coffee. Juniper Mountain Coffee brings to market premium coffee. You know, there's coffee, there's good coffee, and then there's premium coffee. And Juniper Mountain is bringing you premium level coffee. I thought I'd had good coffee until I took a sip of the first mug of Juniper Mountain Coffee and I could taste the difference. It, I was blown away, and you guys are going to be too. I'm super stoked to be partnered with them. I love companies that have a similar shared ethos as us. And check out Juniper Mountain Coffee and all the things they do. You're going to be as impressed with the product as I am. Well, we had, you know, speaking to what to kind of like weird stuff, we, we've done, we filmed a hunt last week. Uh, I think it was last week. It was right after Thanksgiving. We filmed a hunt, and it was uh, it was December. I don't remember the dates. Anyway, I told the guys, and I said, I don't know what this is going to be. There's a few geese around. There's a handful of ducks around. Let's go try. And we went out. We we flushed the birds in the, in the dark. We flushed because we were hunting the river, and they were kind of in that area. We're set up between two roofs. We walked in. We Ended up flushing some birds off in the dark. Got all set up. And we had the weirdest mixed bag for December in Wyoming. 
Um, I've lived in Wyoming for 16 years and I've killed one pintail. One. We killed three Drake pintails that morning and we had a dozen decoy that everybody missed. That's just said, crazy. No, no, boys, we- I'm working the dog. I'm like, I'm watching dog, like, you know, sit and stay. And they start tearing into this flock of, of pintails and they somebody sailed one which we ended up picking it up driving out it had actually climbed the river bank was up in the field where we were parked and we were driving along and it, it flushed out of some barley stubble and was like trying to get away and i got the dog out and got it nice and we shot a snow goose i saw that it, 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 the looking goofy slow goose I've ever saw, man. <laughs> it's like, where in the world did he come from? So this goes out of me on that one, didn't you? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> this goes back to November. I was out there. I was deer hunting that property, and I look out in the field, and, I'm th- and I look, and I'm like, man, somebody left a trash bag out there. A grocery bag got away from somebody. I have to go get that. And I pull the binoculars up, and I look, and it's that juvie snow geese, snow goose. That turd has been around, and he had two blues with it. Really? At that time, in November. And they're gone. I haven't seen them. But he he stayed, and we killed him the other day. And it was the wildest thing. I had this. I have the two goose calls on my lanyard. I got a wood, a wood one that's tuned kind of deep, kind of mellow, right? I got another one that's acrylic, and I get these loud cracks for our windy days out here. Real high, and it's a higher pitch call. And I hit him with that high pitch call, and he's like three quarters of a mile away. And I'm like, look at there's that snow. And I went, no. And he like literally bam and <laughs> right into the decoys. Awesome. He That's never, awesome. he never circled nothing. He's coming in. We and we were filming it, and I was like, do not miss this bird. <laughs> <laughs> well, and and he it's, didn't, he yeah. Yeah. And it's funny you brought up the snow geese too, because we saw the, that fl- big flock of lesters probably had 150 snow geese mixed in yeah. with it. And I've, and I've never seen a snow goose in Montana. Yeah. So we went to, I went to Texas two weeks ago to hunt mule deer, I guess three weeks ago now. And the evening my wife was taking me up uh, to drop me off the airport, flew out the next morning. We're driving up in the evening, and I was just south of the uh, Billings. And I was driving by and I look, and of course there's birds flying around. I mean, we don't have near the birds that we should because they're all further up north where you were hunting, but there's some birds tornadoing into this field. And I look, same thing. There's like 200 snow geese in this field with all these honkers. Right. And I'm in December, end of November, December, and I'm like, dude, that's October stuff for out yeah, here. Yeah, right. But weird. Yeah, it was weird just year. A, yeah, and even like we shot the Sandhill Cranes hung around real late in Canada this year. and I filmed, I've got, uh, in fact, I was just going to upload one of them as we were talking. I'm working on the thumbnail now for YouTube. Um, we shot 40 S- Sandhill cranes in the decoys, and we had a whooping crane come right in the decoys. No and way. It come right in, and I'm hollering at everybody, don't shoot. I mean, it was with like 40 or 50 other cranes. And they come in right in, and he, he comes in and puts the feet down, and we got a video of a whooping crane. And for those that don't know, uh, they're very rare. I think last I heard, there's like 1,600 of them left. Yeah, they're very few. And uh, this one had uh, six leg bands on it. Yeah. I heard a story when I was in Oklahoma two years ago shooting cranes in December. We were there late, and they a similar story had happened before a couple weeks before we got there. They had a whooping crane come in with some sand hills, and it's the same deal. He had, like, the backpack on with the antenna. He mm-hmm. had leg bands galore i mean they track those birds like crazy right yeah and so that was i've seen whooping crane scouting before now typically in canada if um if one's spotted they come down and they'll shut down a whole area oh like anyway anything that there's a whooping crane the canadian game and fish will come down and just a mile by mile area around it they'll put signs up and they'll patrol it every day and make sure that nobody this one we didn't see him the night before um we had no idea it was there, but I mean, they're a lot bigger than a sand hill. Um, right. So when he was coming across, I first thought it was a snow goose mixed in with them, which it happens sometimes. You'll see snow geese mixed in with cranes. A lot of times the snow geese will feed with cranes. 
but the, the Canada geese won't feed with snow geese, the big ones. They don't like them. That's for whatever reason. Um, but um, this one, he man, he come right in, and I'm 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 actually just uploading that. I finally, as you know, editing sucks. I have 42 videos that I filmed this year, um, sitting in the hopper, and it's so tedious. I and I'm a total type A personality that, and just I my focus so. I'm a tired person and I can't start something and not finish it. So I'm when I get I I finally got uh, six or eight of them, no six or seven of them done now um, to start re reloading some stuff to YouTube. It's just it's been such a wild ride and I know some guys can hunt and edit at night and I just I got no. I can't. No, do it. we have I I'm fortunate where when we I I spend the year I spend the fall months and winter months gathering content. And then we figure out when we want to release stuff over the next year. So everything you're seeing from me is a year old. You know, we just dropped yeah. we dropped a hunt from New Year's Eve day last year. We okay. On Saturday. Well, and, and that was and that's my hope too. Is now that I have 42 in the hopper plus right, you've got spring, some stuff. You've got some. You know, yeah. I mean, this is my first year with the YouTube thing, so. Um, I think I, if you're gonna do it, I think if you're gonna do it to a high quality which is, you know, you said type A, and to have some production value to it, it takes time. You know, it, it takes time. It takes strategic planning. Um, if you just want to go out and put a GoPro on your head or your chest and maybe one other camera or just do that style, which those are entertaining and those videos do well on YouTube, that's not what we do here. Yeah. Not, not really what you're after. No. I'm, I'm much more after that more cinematic style experience. Right. Um, that's harder. It is harder. Well, and that's the thing. And then finding somebody to film all the time, you and I had a quick conversation before we started. Like, right. um, you know, I don't mind spending the money on the equipment and then, but it's, and honestly getting the footage isn't really the problem. I kill a lot of birds and get them close, but just taking the time to really edit it. And cause the editing is what makes or breaks it and makes it look good or not good. And, and of course, I'm still learning that process too. And and honestly, the videos, the first five videos I put out, they've done very well, and and people are liking them, and I'm getting a lot of positive feedback. In fact, I've had no negative feedback. But you know, just uh, it's it's a process. I have a whole new respect for you, my my good sir, because I can't even imagine what you go through. Because like I'm trying to make like a 15 minute like. 18 minute video, and I'm cutting them down, and I'm putting them together, and I'm and I and on I don't. I don't have the computer that to, to render fast either. So, right. so rendering right. is what take for those that don't know, you buy, get all the clips, you put them together, you shorten them, you slap them all together, you make it look good. And then you got to render it to see how it's going to look. And then you, then you refix it. And like, it just, it takes a long time. Like, so if you've never done it, like, and you always wonder what goes into these shows, the filming, the hunt, the being a goofball on camera, that's the easy part. Yep. It's the, 100%. It's the hours of I, editing. I, I tell my I tell our video producer all the time you've got the hard job you know because I just have to go out there and be me you know and that right. includes warts and all right you know where it's like right. I, I want to mug I want to be silly that morning I'm I'm feeling good I'm gonna be silly okay you're gonna get that side of me other mornings maybe the hunt's a little more serious or things get real there was I think back to the Canada hunt that we did and there was you could see like multiple days back to back and you get tired as you yeah. know. You get tired, and about day three, we were we were dragging, and and it was the the weather that morning was really co was colder, and it was rainy, flat light, no wind. The birds were not cooperating. They there was tons of birds, but they just didn't want to work. They side slip. It didn't matter what you did, and and the guys are pulling their hair out. A couple of young guys working their butts off, and I said, guys, it's not what you're doing. I said, it's the conditions, and it's the birds. I said, there's, there, we just got it. When our birds, when it's right, we'll get the birds we get, and it'll be fine. Don't worry yeah. about it. But you'll see that on that on camera where I'm kind of like a little more down, a little more serious, where like open, the first day was like everybody, you know. Right. You know I mean, everybody's having fun and good, and everything's good on camera when they're coming into 15, 20 yards, and you're Absolutely. raining up 15, 20 of them. But with the days, and, 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 and I always look at my camera guy – Honestly, what I, I what I learned very quickly, you know, I I have this ability because I hunt so much. But if it's gonna be if it's gonna be one of those days, I'll know after the first two or three flocks. I just tell the camera guy, 
put the camera away, grab your gun, come up here and shoot with us. And we'll try again tomorrow because right. it's just, I'm not going to be the person that I need to be on camera and be <laughs> knowing that's front. Cause I get just as frustrated as anything. Like how can you kill 120 at 15 yards the day before? And then the next day you're struggling to put 40 on the ground. And you got to take 40, 50 yard shots every day. So right. that day, so like, you know, and no, nobody wants to see that, but it's the reality of hunting, you know? Um, well, and I think I'm going to, I'm going to, I'll bring you up short on that one though, dude. I think they do want to see it. And really? I think, I think, yeah, I think people want to see the real person. Cause I think so much of the stuff that, that we grew up with is was whitewashed where you just saw the best of the best. Yeah. And I want to show people those days when my dog breaks you know, or I got three dogs out there that day and they're all going for the same stinking bird, you know, and it's like, <laughs> ah. I you know get that I mean? too, yeah. that's real. That That's right. real. And I think today's consumer, I think, the, I think the guys listen to these podcasts, you know, and the, and the guys watching our videos, they want to see that because then no. what they can do, I think what it does is it, is it shows them that we're no different than they are. We have right. days when the birds don't cooperate. We have hunts where we don't shoot limits. We have day our dogs aren't always perfect, you know. Yeah. We don't shoot great every time we go out. Yeah. You know, I, I took my daughter out the other day to put my young dog on pheasants for the first time, mm -hmm. and he, fl he ended up flushing eight roosters. I killed one. <laughs> I got like a complete noob. And I'm like, what is going on? And it wasn't like they were flushing at 50 yards. They were yeah. he hunts close and they were flushing close. I just couldn't shoot that day. Right. Well, I, mean, I try to I try to throw some of those clips in there. Yeah. But, but I just like I you don't, I you just don't look I, like a rube. I know, know. Well, not even look like a rube. It's just like I just get so fr like I'm not a good one. I'm just like because I don't know if it's an ego thing or whatever. But when they're not coming in good and I'm having to shoot at 50. That's not why I go hunting. I like them when they're right in my face, and that's what gets the old ticker going. You know what I mean? Yep, and, I do. Um, so when, they're, when I got to take a shot at 40 or 50 yards sometimes, like, and it's all day, and there's just no wind, and there's nothing you can do about it, like, I just, I'm not in a good mindset. And I just, I just feel like <laughs> it's not, it's not because I don't want anybody to see me fail. Sure. Because I don't want anybody to see me like, God, you want a grumpy asshole. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But yet, that's, I mean, that's who we are. That's that's who we are. And, yep. and I think everybody's that way. You know, everybody mm -hmm. has their good days and their bad days. And and I that's one of the cool things about podcasting and social media. And I we I try really hard to come across that way in videos where it just is what it is. You know, and you're not going to, you're not going to put in a bunch of garbage in, in, in the yeah. video. But a little bit of stuff here and there to show people like, yeah, I'm, I'm no different than you are, you know. What I mean? <laughs> exactly. No, for sure. Yeah. Anyway, that's that's cool. But I got I got a couple of questions um, off social media when I when I told people I was going to have you on again. One of them was from a guy named. It was at uh, Dan uh, Dan Twaits Twaits eight thirty four, and he said, "Dan, there's your shout out, Dan Twaits eight thirty four, and he asked." How does that guy hunt so much? <laughs> That's the number one question that people ask if I like if I've just got a trust fund or if I was just born into money or what the whole deal is. But no, I uh so I'm a senior account executive for a marketing firm. And uh Cole Townsend, who a lot of people know and very very famous guy, done very well for himself, very good dear friend of mine. He came out and did some early honker hunting with me too, uh, did a couple YouTube videos with him and stuff. Um, he kind of gives me crap too, but the thing is, is I I have a real job that's commission based. I'm not like a normal person. I don't have to punch in the clock. I don't have to um, get a salary. I'm 100% commission based, so I can sell ahead of, in advance um, throughout the year. And once I hit my nut that the company asked for me, and then I put a little more on the books, I can just go. Um, and I can pretty much do my job from anywhere. So the sales side of it, a lot of it's done now through March. And then a lot of it's done in the summer, which is great for me because it's sort of the tail end of the season. I have time to get a lot of work in, but when I'm at work, I'm cranking. Um, I also have some investment properties um, and some social media sponsorships, that kind of thing too. So 
the money side for me, I have the ability to do that. Plus, let's just be real. I'm not married. I don't have any kids. I don't have anybody to tell me no. I don't have any responsibilities. So that's the number one reason right there. Except for mama asking, going. It's been, it's been a while since you've been home, Michael. <laughs> yeah, no, there's nobody like, except for mama. Mama's the only one that gets to make the call that Michael needs to come home. But yeah, so for me, I don't have any responsibilities. When I graduated college, mom asked what I was going to do. I said, mom, I'm going to make enough money and have enough time off that I can go hunt as much as I want. That was my always my dream. Now I get to live it. This was a goal of mine. Uh, it took 18 years to get to this point. Um, and every year the company gives me more and more leash. And um, I, I keep dragging. I keep taking as much line as they'll get me. Um, I, I, I Sometimes I really push this shit just to see if they're going to tell me no. And I do well enough with my sales that they haven't told me no yet. So I'm waiting for the day. But um, yeah, I shout out to Late Media. They have had my back even with doing the social media thing and now YouTube. Um, they have really had my back behind all of it. And they're my biggest fans, to be completely honest with you. So real reason is not married, no kids got, I can sell up in advance and I don't have to clock in. Yeah. You, you, de you mentioned that in the first podcast that you and I did for, for all full disclosure, you talked about that, but it is, you know, in, and I'm not, throw, I'm not going to throw you under the bus by any stretch because you're, when I say I would, a lot of us are living vicariously through you. It's true. I love watching your stuff. For the simple reason that dude i just i just sent two different magazines to the printer yesterday and we were supposed to do this podcast last week and i couldn't pull it off because i was too busy i had right. too many irons in the fire and it was just like holy smokes so having the ability to with through social media and youtube and whatever it might be podcasts to connect with somebody like you that's out there living the dream but has done it has done it in a way that's deliberate you know it's not like you're just out there willy-nilly flying by the seat of your pants you set yourself up for this yeah and that's the thing like it was a goal of mine like now i'm going to tell anybody that has aspirations to live like i live there's there's some downsides to this too one i don't have a family i got the dog and if i look at him and say hey you want to go hunting it's always go right blue is never going to tell me no but there's some downsides you know in the off season it gets a little bit lonely that's why i work really hard um you know, I've just never met a gal that uh, can put up with my BS, as my mother calls it, um, because, you know, when, when it's time to go and someone and Todd calls me and says, hey, the Mallards are here. You better get your ass down here. Guess where I'm going? I'm going to Wyoming. So um, it's there is some downsides to it. But honestly, I thought the more I would get to hunt, the more I'd get sick of it, the more I would it wouldn't be special. But I'll tell you what, this year I've hunted more than I ever have all these states all this time. And I love it more now than I think I did before. I've had the most incredible year. I've got to do some stuff uh, and I've had so much fun. And so for me, the trade-off of not having a family and just having to answer to myself, for me, it works. For a lot of guys, they love their family. I know when we were going to try to do this last week, you were saying, oh, I got kids. I got to get them to bed. I got Bible study. I got all these things. And I'm just like... Man, like maybe, but for me, um, not in the cards. This is what I want to do. So, and even like my buddies that are like Cole and some of those other guys that are social media guys, they don't have families. They can't keep a girlfriend. You know, Cole's one of the, I'm without sounding, he's one of the, he's a really good looking dude. He can get any girl he wants. Right. And uh, it's hard for him to even keep a relationship going because you know, when you're guiding and you're on the road all that time. And so yes, you get this one thing and I'm living the life, but I, I want everybody to know that when you're a guide and you're out there, you don't get to see your family. You don't get to do all those things. You don't get to see your nieces and nephews and do, I wasn't home for Thanksgiving this year. I shot my buck on Thanksgiving this year um, down on the Indy res. So, right. you know, while everybody else was eating turkey, I was trying to hunt mule deer, which some guys are like, oh, lucky bastard, right? You know, but yeah, right? But true, I, I didn't have no turkey that day. We shot that deer and we sat on the back of the truck and we had a summer sausage sandwich after we were done and a bag of Cheetos and a Dr. Pepper. That's what we had for our Thanksgiving dinner. But you want to know what? To me, when we were sitting there and we hunted that deer for three days, like that was our turkey dinner and it tasted right. so good, you know? Right. Yeah, absolutely. It's all trade-offs. You know, I, I look at, I remember when I was a young man, I, I loved to fly fish. I loved to fish, period. But I, I loved to fly fish. And 
I dabbled in the guiding arena for years and years and years while I was a school teacher. I used to do it a lot. Now I do it a little bit because I still like to do it. Um, but there was a guy back in Michigan when I was a young man that was like, he was the dude. Like, that's what that's what I wanted to do. It's what I wanted to be. And he was a he was a guide. He was an outfitter. He was a, he had his own setup. He was repping for companies. He was getting to design rods and do all this other stuff. And I'm like, dude, that's the life. That's what I want. And I ran into him a few years back. And I wouldn't say he's washed up because he's still relevant. Very, very relevant. But he and I got swapping stories. And he's like, yeah, man, I've been divorced twice. He goes, I don't have any kids. He goes, I don't have a retirement really set up other than anything that I've done. And, you know, and he's looking at, you know, some of the stuff that I did. And we just got talking. You can't compare yourself to other people. Right. And that's because comparison is the thief of joy, you know. And I'm happy for you. And I love watching what you do. I'm I'm a fan, dude. I'm, I'm rooting you on going, dude, good for you. But at the same time, I'm not trading my kids and my wife and the life that I have to go chase yeah. what go chase what you do. And I don't want the, that. Yeah, and that's what people have to understand is that's the, you know to live the life that I live. That's that's the decision you have to make. Yep. Is a family and kids important to me? Um, you know, you can't you can't. My dad told me something when I was 15 years old, and it really stuck with me. He goes, Michael, you can either get married and have kids. Or you can have all the cool toys and hunt all over the world and do anything you want to do that day, but you can't have both to, to the level that I wanted to do it. Right. To. So right. I'm not saying you, you can't hunt and I'm not saying that, but what I'm saying is to the level that I do it, which was my dream. He said, cause I was dating, yeah, I had, you know, girlfriends and stuff and he just like, you know, and they always, you know, bust your ass about leaving and all the things, you know? So, you know, um, I, I, I love my life. I, for those that are following that always wonder and, you know, that are fans, I thank you. Uh, I couldn't do what I do without you. In fact, that's the whole, I don't do this for fame. I do this to share this with experience, my experiences with people that can't because right. they, they chose the other life and that's fine. I'm proud of you. I'll be the first ones to take your kids hunting when you want to go. Cause I enjoy taking kids hunting. I just telling you my 15 year old nephew shot that big buck and I was more excited for him when he shot his than when I was when I shot mine. Right. So, um, but, but just know that there is a trade off and that, um, that you, you don't get something without giving it up. Well, that's exactly right. You know, and I, and I look at it, I'm not, I'm not out there and hunt doing it as much as you are, but the, when I get, when I do get to do it, it's usually pretty, pretty dialed. Like I'll wait until it's perfect before I go. You, you know? You're coming in May. May, you're coming. You yeah. and I are going to spend it's a week on. together. No, it's on. It's I'm on. telling I'm, you, and yeah, I'm going to show you some snow goose stuff. That that one got you fired up. Wait till I put 500 in your face screaming. Yeah, it. like, I'm telling you, like, like you'll be hooked. Like, I just got to find, I just got to call Savage and get an extension for that. those two renegades and be like, yeah, I need sure. two extensions. Federal, I need six cases of ammo <laughs> you know exactly no that, and that's where when i talk to kelvington and i tell him you know like a lot of guys you know need two or three case, cases well shit i shot two or three cases out in montana last week you know right. like it's just volume like you just shoot a lot more and right and right but yeah i mean we're gonna like i want you to come and that's like oh no, there's, there's two, there's two the things in my there's two things in my life once i got the bug i never wanted to do anything and it's always gonna be my first choice i grew up in minnesota i hunted the hardwoods for whitetails and satin deer stands all damn day and never left when i got the mule deer bug and when i got the snow goose bug nothing else was intent as intense it was like heroin man both of those once i started hunting mule deer and once i started hunting uh snow geese those both got in the blood and that if, if that if god came down and said you had to pick one i'd take snow geese but if you could pick two i'd take mule deer so that that and I'm we're gonna get a little inside conversation here, but that outfitter that I hooked you up with for your mom's antelope hunt, yeah, I was there and to hunt antelope in October this year, and you should have seen the mule deer that they brought in while I was oh. there, and that is an easy tag to draw. We can talk about that at a different time. Yeah, I'm, we're that, coming, we're coming. That That's is so that is that is one heck of a heck of a hunt. But anyway, same thing. We we're talking about when I do get ducks, because it's going to happen at some point. I'm going to get weather, and my ducks will show up. You're my first phone call. 
I want to be like, you get your butt out here because yes. it is going to be epic. I've never killed a duck on a river. Oh, that's going to change this year. A couple weeks, a couple weeks, it'll happen. I got, I've got an elk tag that I've, that I've got to hunt. Uh, I'm going to do it the 27th to the end of the end of the year. And then it's ducks. My focus will be ducks, 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 ducks. Your duck season clothes out there? We just don't have much. Well, this tag that I have is a special late season tag that okay. they run that they run extra late. Oh well, yeah. When's the duck season closed though in Wyoming? Oh oh oh, sorry. Um, we go through January twenty first or twenty second this year. That'd be, that'd be good. It's later, and then that's goose right. is open until the end of February. I like that. Which is nice. Yeah. That's nice, but yeah, we just we got nothing, dude. Like we went out the other day. I I told our social media coordinator, I was like, let's just go sit in a blind for a couple hours, take some, get some product shots, you know, get some go get some Juniper Mountain coffee shots, and some Federal and some Savvy, you know, you got to have all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Go get some content, and we ended up shooting just birds that were like feet down, gonna land in the decoys. In fact. The two birds, the two Drake Mallards he killed, he flushed and shot. That's I awesome. shot one, the bird. I, I shot, we shot four Drake Mallards. Um, he shot two that landed in the decoys and he flushed and shot them. One of mine, I ended up shooting it on the water because it would not flush. Mm -hmm. I'm like, whatever, bang. You know, it's like Ramsey Russell hit, hit, hit the nail on the head with that. I never heard it put this way. He goes, You did the hard part. You tricked them. They're yeah. sitting there. You don't have to flush them. Just shoot them. You know? <laughs> You I get a rule if they're gonna stand. stand. Yeah, if they're gonna stand there like a turkey, I shoot them like a turkey. I'll yeah, it's them. exactly. I don't care. That's exactly <laughs> what I did. And then there was another one that came buzzing in, and he was doing a whole back flapper, and I shot him, and I ended up sailing that bird. Unfortunately, the dog the dogs mopped him up. It was it was good, but uh, I was surprised at the number of birds um, that we had. There were several times when we're, I'm getting ready to call a shot on this bird that's back flapping, and I look. And here comes like 15 more right behind him. And I was like, no, 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 don't. Because we didn't have a camera. We were, it right. was just, we were just doing stuff with our phones. Right. And I was like, no, don't shoot, don't shoot, don't shoot. Save this and we'll set it up and we'll go down and we'll get a camera band and we'll film the whole thing and set it up. And that's that's one of the things that I never thought I, I'd hear myself say, like, don't shoot. You know, right. don't, don't shoot. Growing up in Michigan, it was like, there's ducks. Shoot them. Shoot them. Yeah. But man, not not. A, I've gotten to the point where it's kind of like, let's I, I, be careful with what I, with what I've got because I know I don't have a lot of birds right now. And the bird and the birds that I have are super stale. Like I didn't after the first couple of birds, I didn't call because mm -hmm. you call at them, they don't even look. They just right. keep on doing. That's they're they're just doing their own thing. So it's like we're just gonna stand here and let the decoys do the work. We're right. in a, we're in a spot where the birds want to come. The decoys look good. I'm not going to call. This episode of the We Men Podcast is brought to you by Cryptech. Guys, I'm super stoked to be partnering with Cryptech, and I love the fact that I share the same ideals with them. I love the fact this company is veteran-owned, American hunter patriots. It's awesome. I also love the fact that they make top-notch hunting gear, and they offer it in killer camel patterns that are going to keep you concealed across a huge range of of environments and conditions. So guys, if you're looking for more gear, get out there and check out Cryptech. Brian at Federal sent me some Black Cloud yeah. number ones this year, and I've never had number ones. I'm a, I'm a BB guy. Like I shoot yeah. three inch BBs. I don't care if it's ducks, cranes, whatever. I shoot Black Cloud three inch BBs for everything. But he sent me some ones, and I'll tell you what, those ones are the most snow goose killing load I've ever shot. God dang, I got some footage of just, just poof. I mean, I mean, even at 40 yards, they were just getting smashed. Man, I love that, that load. It's funny you say that because what I, I, we got to do a hunt with Brian. I've had him on the podcast, but I got, we got to do a hunt in Montana late last year with him, and we got to play with some new, new at the time product that's out now. We shot heavy bismuth, um, heavy 13, no, heavy, heavy 12. Can't remember what else, and a couple new black cloud loads. And he was saying, I was picking his brain, and I was like, "What's your favorite, favorite like all-purpose do all waterfall load?" He goes, "Black cloud number ones." He said that right there, and yeah, I was like, oh, "That's funny because I've always liked twos. Everybody's see, I, got their thing." 
Yeah, no, see, I see, I have found it with guys that shoot twos, and I've tried them, and I don't like them because it doesn't seem like the pellets have enough energy when it's to break wings. So my, it always seems like there's a lot more sailors and there's a lot more cripples when there's a couple guys in the blind shooting twos. So I've been a big proponent of BBs because you hit them with a BB, they get smoked. Um, so because especially when you're hunting snow geese, they just start coming and coming and even cranes too. They just come, 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 come. So if you're dot, running down cripples and, you know, yeah, by the letter of the law, you have to make an immediate attempt to retrieve. That's immediate to get that bird uh, down game. So, you know, if you're, I just got so sick of having to chase cripples and stuff that I kind of, it's kind of like, I know a lot of guides out there don't allow uh, expandable broadheads mm. in their, in their elk camps and stuff. I don't allow twos in the in the blind because I've had, <laughs> I've had I've had so many guys bring them and then and it's always on their end. I know which guy. I'm like, you're shooting twos, aren't you? That was all they had. I had to buy it. <laughs> I was like, come on, you're killing me. I've got if I'm just gonna shoot geese, I know it's just gonna be geese. I'm with you. I like BBs. And and back in the days when I shot a pen banger all the time, and it was triple Bs. Yeah, triple B was like the load out of out of a ten gauge. Yeah, and holy smokes! But we do so much where we get so much like mixed in where we're shooting geese and ducks. It's like twos across the board. Yeah, yep. and 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 I'm just and I just call shot closer. You yeah, know, it's kind of like not nah, forty and in, mm -hmm. 40, 40 and in, and and it, and they work just fine. But I'm with you. I'm I'm with you. But those ones, man, those black cloud ones just on snow geese on honkers, it was a little bit light, like these late season ones that's got all their feathers and stuff. Yeah. Um, I shot some of them out in Montana and uh didn't crush them as well, but uh the <laughs> snow geese guys and lessers, man, is it they eat them up. Holy that's crap. That's awesome. That's that is really cool. Yeah, dude. I I I've been so just pleased across the board with federal. You know, I've been shooting federal since I was a kid. It was what I always bought. And I just, I'm just a fan, you know, and, it, and it's so cool to be partnered with a company like that. You yeah. know, you call, I need something. I call Brian and, and it's done. You know, yeah. I got to go in Texas. I was with the federal guys on, on the mule deer hunt, testing mm -hmm. new, testing new uh, 7mm PRC loads that they're coming mm -hmm. out with. Um, and there was some, there was some non-disclosure stuff that I can't, I can't talk about, but, um, that we, that we, that we played with too, but just awesome dudes, you know, just awesome yeah. dudes, great company. I just, I would have a hard time if this, if all this went away tomorrow, I'd have a hard time buying anything else. I wouldn't to be honest with you. I would, I, 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 that's what I'd buy. When I met Brian, we spring snow goose on it together, you know, um, you know, I I was shooting federal. Blue box was my jam, and I still love blue box to this day. I mean, um, but you know, I, I if I, if if it all went away and he said I can't can't take care of you, I'd still shoot federal. That's oh, what I yeah. bought. I mean, I mean, we cleaned out. I don't know if you've seen the you, the video I post on Instagram, but uh, Shields did me a solid. And I uh, saw it. I saw it. <laughs> so I was like, we bought. Dude. <laughs> two pallets so they had the 100 packs blue box and uh they gave did me a solid on a price buy so they said uh we got these 100 packs we'll give you a deal on them and and uh, i'll call all the guys and um i ended up i bought a brand new at4 duramax three quarter ton and we filled the back of that truck bed up twice so so it was <laughs> there was so I think I mean there was one guy that bought this podcast that are going that sob is the reason I can't get ammo. <laughs> there is there is there one guy bought forty hundred packs. Wow! But I mean I shoot personally myself. It's about twenty five cases a year. Yeah. I mean oh, that's... when you're traveling when you're traveling and hunting as much as you do, you know, and, and you're hunting these big feeds with big. But yeah, I mean, you're going through ammo. There's no doubt about it. Yeah, it's you know, it's the uh, game is completely different. Yeah, I can literally, I can literally go down to the blind with ten shells and <laughs> and, and and come home with and and walk home with my five Drake mallards, maybe a plus bird, maybe a goose or two, 
and I might have a shell or two left in my pocket because they usually got to mop up a cripple or two. Yeah. You know, but I don't. That's just what I take. But I'm, yeah. again, I'm shooting birds feet down 10, 15, 20 yards. Yeah. yeah. You can kill them with, you can kill them with a, with a 410 most of the yeah. time. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, 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 you know, when you get to like Canada where you can shoot eight ducks, eight darks, 20 right. snows every day, you know, when you're hunting snow geese in North Dakota where it's a 50 bird limit every day per guy. Right. In the spring, there's no limit. You know, it was that way when I went out and hunted with the Dave Smith guys uh, for ca for for cacklers out west. I go, how many boxes should I put in? He's like, boxes. And I Brian had sent some TSS out, so I had some of that. And I was like, well, how many rounds of me boxes should I throw in my blind bag? Boxes. He's like, just throw a ten pack of that TSS and you'll be fine. I think it's a three bird cackler limit, you know. Mm -hmm. And we went out with ten guys and we shot, you know, thirty birds every day, but. It was the first time in my life I went out with a 10 pack and I had three shells left when I was done. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. Like I I just like I don't like to me that's just like nuts. Like to me, a normal day, I'm gonna shoot two, three boxes. I don't know. I always put five boxes in my blind and and if I'm hunting snows in the spring, I got two. If you come in the spring, you never, and this is the because you don't want to do the walk of shame back to the truck. You never come to a goose blind snow geese with less than a case of shells, period. Right. Otherwise, right. you got to do the walk of shame back. And Black Cloud gets pretty damn expensive when you're the only guy sitting there without ammo. Uh, there, but they go for about 80 Price bucks a box. Up every time, <laughs> 80 <laughs> bucks a box. When everybody's whacking and you're out of ammo, yeah. you got to do, yep. do the walk of shame. Oh, uh, and that's a completely different ball game, you know. And it and it's a good point. Uh, and it goes back to you know what guys are listening to. They're listening to that, going, "Well, that guy must be a terrible shot." It's like, no, it's a it's the scenario you're hunting in where it's a volume scenario, especially spring snow geese. Some of these hunts in Canada, where, yeah, man, when we were up in Alberta, it was eight geese, eight ducks, and you could easily burn through two boxes of shells in the morning. Yeah, I mean, easily. Easily, yeah. I mean, it's it's nuts, like. You know, uh, you got to figure most of the time I got eight guys in the blind. We can shoot 100 snows. You can shoot, uh, what, eight, 64 darks and 64 ducks. And a lot of times we do it in Canada. So right. that's a lot of banging, boys. That's a lot of banging. Yeah, it, it is. You know, and if, and if you're – and I try really hard. We, we are very conscious about everybody shoots their own birds. You know what I mean? Yeah. Where it's like you got your five, I got my five. How many we got? How many got left down there? Okay, I got three. It's like oh, I got four drakes right here. I can shoot one more. We are very conscious about that, and it's it's a little different scenario when you're talking like snow geese because you're right. It's volume, you know. It's, it's volume. It, There's no possession limit. There's no any of that. So you just, I mean, it's just a free for all. You can shoot your twenty birds or fifty birds every day. Right. You know, the snow goose hatch was so insane this year with juvenile birds that. Um, there's been some pretty stupid numbers been put up from Canada all the way down into South Dakota and Nebraska. Well, I, um, I can't, I can't wait for May. I because yeah. I, I, I know we had a good hatch. I've been talking to guys. I'm like, this is going to be freaking awesome. That return flight in the spring yeah. is going to be epic. Yeah, you're gonna. I, I can't wait to take you. It's gonna be. I, we got to try to get Brian to come with too because I like him to come up for a fly out for a few. That would days. be fun. Make, that, be would fun. Be a, that would be a ton of fun. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Well, dude. I'm going to cut you loose. We've been on for about an hour. Um, I appreciate you jumping on. I always have a good time BSing with you. We laugh. Yeah. We have a good time. I can't wait for the day when we can actually sit in a blind together. And when it's all done, crack a beverage at the end of the day and sit back and, and right. laugh even more. As long as you're not a white claw guy, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Why do I look like a white claw guy? <laughs> <laughs> My body started drinking white claw. This like, oh, like, well, there's no calories in it. I'm like, when did we start worrying about calories? Like, we're fucking duck hunters. Like, you know, like, I mean, if we don't get a little oh, tired goodness. in the middle, like, you know, like, what? Yeah. If, so they're all drinking white claws. So I had to give them some crap. That's hilarious. That's hilarious. Well, cool, dude. I will jump back on and I will be in touch with you. As soon as we get birds and you get on the hop on the hop on the train and get out here and we'll get you some river mallards. That'll be a good I gotta time. Do it. Cool. Looking I forward appreciate to your it. time, dude. Thank you very much. And as always, it was it was a ton of fun. Thank you guys. Michael underscore underscore McNeil at Instagram and YouTube. Very good. Very good. Check him out. You guys will love his content. If you like what we do here at Wingman, you're gonna love what Michael does. So 
Thanks again, dude. All right, so I'm going to do a little bit of a recap here for our editing purposes, and then we can okay. we can get off here. All right, so guys, this is a phenomenal podcast between my buddy Michael McNeil and I. I've had Michael on in the past. Uh, we have a great time talking together. He lives the dream lifestyle if you're a waterfowler. And but he and I get into that conversation about how he set his life up for that. It's been a ton of fun watching him, watching him get into filming this year. And he's kind of realizing that it's maybe not quite as easy and as simple as it looks on YouTube, but it's still fun. And Michael is just one of those guys that's infectious, man. You talk to him and the conversation just rolls. And I think you are going to have an awesome time listening to this podcast.